Assalam o Alaikum. Waalaikum Assalam. You are early today, Baba. Hmm, my work got over early today. I'll pray to Allah that you finish your work early every day. <laughs> That's so sweet of you. So, what are you doing now? Nothing. I finished all my homework some time back, and I was thinking of watching TV. That's good. Then let us watch the TV together. Then. No, Baba. I don't find the shows on TV interesting. I like your stories more than that. Masha Allah, that's very good. It's important that you learn the works of the prophets. You can learn so many things from their lives. It is true. In fact, my friends also loves the stories of prophets. Huh? Are you telling the stories to your friends too? Of course, I am. They always beg me to tell them the story of prophets. I tell them during our breaks. Masha Allah, you are such a good boy. Can you tell me another story today, please? Insha Allah, I will. Which was the story that I told you yesterday? You told me the story of Prophet Suleiman yesterday. Hmm. Then the next one is going to be the story of Prophet Isaia alayhi salam. Who was he, Baba? Prophet Isaia lived after the time of Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. He is one of those who prophesied about Prophet Isa alayhi salam before he was born. Now listen carefully. Bismillah. The story of Prophet Isaia alayhi salam. Prophet Isaia alayhi salam lived during the time when King Hezekiah was ruling the country. Hezekiah was a good king and a faithful follower of Allah. He also listened to Isaia alayhi salam and sought advice from him. The kingdom prospered under the good king, and the people liked him very much. One day, the king became sick with an infected foot. It was during this time that he heard a terrible news. The messenger ran into the palace, and he shouted, "King Sinharib of Babylon is coming to attack us!" It was true. The evil king Sinharib was approaching Israel with an army of sixty thousand men. The king got worried when he heard about the news, and he asked the prophet, "Why did Allah reveal to you about Sinharib and his army?" "Nothing," said the prophet. "He has not yet revealed anything to me." The king was sad. Even if he had to fight, he could not because of his sick leg. That night, when the prophet was praying, he received a revelation from Allah. Next, the prophet went to meet the king to pass on the message. Allah wants you to appoint a successor, for your end is near. When the prophet told him this, the good king turned to the qibla. And he started praying with a sincere heart. O Lord of Lords and God of Gods, he prayed. You know what is better than I do. My open acts and secrets are with you. When Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala heard the sincere prayers of Haskia, he felt compassionate for him. That night, when the Prophet was praying. Allah revealed to the Prophet that He was going to extend the life of Askia for another fifteen years. God wanted him to extract the water of the fig and apply to his sore. He also revealed that the king would be saved from his enemy. The next day, the Prophet rushed to inform the king about the good news. When the king heard about this, he was overjoyed. The king applied water of the fig on his sore as he was commanded. It was a miracle. The sores got cured immediately. The king was happy now. He prostrated on the ground, praying, "O oh Lord, you grant mercy and answer the prayers of the troubled ones." 
The next day, King Sinharib was shocked to find his soldiers lying dead on the ground. Allah had done what he had promised the Prophet. No one was alive except for the king and five of his companions. King Hazkiya arrested them and took them back to his kingdom. He put Sinharib and his companions in shackles and displayed them in his kingdom for 70 days. After 70 days, Allah revealed to Prophet Isaiah to send Sinharib and his companions back to their country. When the Prophet informed Haskiah about this, he released them immediately. When Sinharib returned to his people, he gathered all of them including his ministers and advisors. He then told them about what had happened. How his soldiers were killed and how he was shackled and displayed for 70 days. The priests and his magicians came forward and told the king, We warned you before about their god and their prophets. They said, But you did not listen, said another. It is a nation which nobody can overcome. Sinharib was afraid now, and he never ever thought of attacking the land of Prophet Isaiah again. MashaAllah, that was a great story. I'm glad you liked it, my son. Hazkia was such a good king. Isn't that why God helped him so much? Yes, my son, he was a good Muslim and a faithful follower of Allah. Now shall I ask you a few questions? I'm ready. All right, now tell me the name of the king who attacked Israel. It was King Sinarib of Babylon. That's correct. What was Hazkiah's sickness? Hmm, the king became sick with an infected foot. What did Allah reveal to the Prophet first? Allah revealed to the Prophet that Hazkiah's death was near and that he should appoint a successor. That's wonderful! And did he appoint the successor? No. When Hazkiah heard about the revelation, he prayed to Allah and he got cured. God then gave him another 15 years to live. How was Sinharib and his companions punished? They were shackled and displayed in Israel for 70 days. And what happened after that? They were released and they returned to Babylon. Did Sinharib attack Israel again? No, he was afraid of the gods and prophets of Israel and he never attacked again. Masha Allah, you gave all the right answers today. Thank you, Baba. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. <sighs> Are you feeling sleepy now? Hmm, I don't know, Baba. I was tired the whole day and feeling very sleepy. <laughs> All right. Have you heard the story of Prophet Uzair alayhi salam who slept for 100 years? Huh? 100 years? How can anyone sleep that long? Hmm, I think you should go to sleep now. I will tell you his story tomorrow. No, Baba. My sleep is gone. I want to hear his story now. Please tell me, Baba. Are you sure? Yes. I will never be able to sleep till I hear the story of this prophet. Sleeping for 100 years? That sounds so amazing. <laughs> All right, inshallah. I will tell you the story of Prophet Uzair alayhi salam now.
Now listen carefully. Bismillah. The story of Prophet Uzair alayhi salam. Prophet Uzair alayhi salam was a saint and a wise man. He lived after Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam and before Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam. One day as usual, the Prophet was going to visit his farm on his donkey. By around noon, he came to a small town that was ruined a long time ago and no one lived there anymore. All that he could see was the collapsed buildings, dusty walls and well, a lot of human bones. The Prophet had been traveling all morning and the sun was scorching hot now. So he decided to take some rest in that town. He got down from his donkey and sat under the tree. He was very hungry. So he took the figs and the grapes he had in his basket and started eating them. He sat there for some time and then he stood up to see around. He saw that the walls still stood up were very old and shattered. He thought that they could fall down any time. He then saw human bones lying around. How will Allah bring them back to life? He said out of curiosity. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard what he had just said, he got angry and decided to show the Prophet his power. He sent the angel of death to Prophet Uzair alayhi salam. The angel of death took the Prophet's life as he had been told. The Prophet lay there lifeless for a long, long time. It is said that the Prophet lay dead for about 100 years. The Prophet's donkey died in the meantime and lots of things changed during those 100 years. One day God decided to wake the Prophet from his death and he sent the angel of death again to the Prophet. The angel arrived and revived the Prophet back from the dead. When the Prophet opened his eyes, he didn't know what was going on. For how long did you sleep? asked the angel. It was late afternoon and the Prophet had gone to sleep early afternoon. I must have slept for a day or part of a day, he said as he was confused. You remained asleep for hundred years, said the angel. The Prophet was shocked to hear that. He realized that it was by the power of God that he came back to life. The angel then revived the Prophet's donkey as well. The Prophet then started traveling back to his home. When he reached his native place, he was surprised again. The whole town had changed by now. There were new shops, new streets and he couldn't recognize anyone. And when he reached his house, he could not recognize anybody there either. I am Ozer, he told them again and again. But they shook their head and told him that they don't know him. He then went to the crippled old woman sitting outside. He realized that she was blind as well. Isn't this the house of Ozer? He asked her. Yes, it is, she said. But people have long forgotten about him. He was gone around hundred years ago. The prophet realized that this old woman was actually his maid during those times. I am Uzair, he told her. Allah had taken my life and now after hundred years, he has returned it to me. The old maid was able to recognize the voice, but she was not sure. So she told the prophet, Allah used to answer Uzair's prayers. If you are Uzair, then pray to Allah that I might see and pray that I may walk. The Prophet agreed. He prostrated and prayed to Allah. Then he stood up, placed his fingers on her eyes and gently massaged them. He took his hands and said, Get up by the power of Allah. It was a miracle. She could see everything now. Then she stood up by herself and she could walk all by herself. The old woman was overjoyed. She told the Prophet happily, 
Yes, what you're saying is the truth. I bear witness that you are Uzair. She then asked the Prophet to come along with her, and they went to the assembly of Israelites nearby. The Prophet's son, who was 118 years old now, was heading the assembly. Even his children and grandchildren were part of the assembly. The old maid called out to them, Look at him! Do you recognize who he is? But no one recognized, and they shook their heads. He is your father, Uzair. He is back. You are lying, his son said. How can he be back after hundred years? Look at me, she said. I am your old maid. Was I able to see before? And when did you last see me walking? Your father prayed to Allah for me, and here I am, walking and seeing. The Prophet's son stood up and approached them. My father had a black mole between his shoulders, he told the Prophet. We will believe you if you can show me that mark. The Prophet showed him the mark and his son realized that he was indeed his father. Everyone came and embraced the Prophet. They were happy that he was back. When the Prophet was asleep, Nebushad Nazar, the evil king of Babylon, had destroyed all the copies of Torah to destroy their religion. No one remembered the Torah now. The only copy left in the world was buried somewhere and that only the Prophet knew. Allah is truly great, one of his grandsons said. Only you can tell us where the last copy of the Torah is. Prophet Uzair took the people to the place where he knew where the Torah was buried and he took out the copy. The people were very happy to see the book. They thought was lost. The leaves of the book had rotten by now and the book itself was crumbled. Prophet Uzair sat under the shade of a tree surrounded by children to copy the book. He carefully copied the words from the script and made a new book. The Prophet died when he was 40 years old in Israel. Mashallah. That was such a great story. Sleeping for 100 years? It's a great wonder. <laughs> I'm glad that you like the story, my son. What was the name of that ruined town where the Prophet had slept? Hmm, some say that the town was Sairabad. Alright, now are you ready for the questions? Yes, Baba. Why did God put Uzair salam to sleep? It was because the Prophet had doubted the power of God for a moment. And how long did the Prophet sleep? He slept for 100 years. Did people recognize the Prophet when he came back home? No, no one recognized the Prophet as he was gone for 100 years. And who was the first person to recognize him? Hmm, it was his maid. Very good. Now tell me why were there no copies of Torah in Israel? The evil king of Babylon had destroyed all the copies of Torah in Israel except for one. Who copied the Torah? The Prophet did. Masha Allah, you gave me all the right answers. Thank you, Baba. You can go to sleep now. Good night. Good night, Baba.